The Honorable Gwyneth Brown. The Honorable Button Gwyneth Brown. Yes, sir. The Honorable Button Gwyneth Brown. <laughs> Get this, Kelleher. I'm not taking orders from you or anybody else. I know you got me to Washington, but now that I'm here, I'm going to kick you out, Kelleher. You and all the rest of the crooks. <laughs> that ought to hold him for a while. You, 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 you's a liar. Who says I'm a liar? I says you's a liar. Me? Yes, you. Nobody's gonna call me no liar. You is a liar. What is it, Clarence? Mr. Button, can I come in there a minute? Yes, come on. Yeah, come on, I'll show you who's a liar. Get on in there. Go on, go on in there. Go on. Hey, hey, hey ask Mr. Button. Go on, ask him. I don't like to call nobody a liar, sir. But this here liar, he say you's a shown up descendant of the man who signed the, proper, the Declaration of Independence back in 1776. That's right, I am. Well, maybe you is, sir. But this young liar says you got a letter signed by that same button Gwyneth that signed the Declaration of Independence. Sure, I have. Yes, sir, maybe you have. But you tried to tell me that letter was worth $50,000. That's right, it is. Well, does she believe me now? Oh, I believe this gentleman, all right. But till I see that letter with my own eyes, you is still a liar. Mr. Button, is it all right for me to show this ignoramus the, the button win that letter? Sure, Clarence, go ahead. I ought to charge you $2 just to look at it. just a scrap of paper. And only last week I turned down $50,000 for this letter. Why the devil don't you look at things before you tear them up? I'm sorry. Forgive my ignorance, but who was Button Gwinnett? Why is his letter so valuable? Why is it... Oh, what's the difference? You wouldn't understand. The letter has only been in my family for six generations. It's the most valuable thing I ever owned. I'm terribly, terribly sorry. $50,000. No, it's all right. Wasn't your fault. You couldn't have understood how much it meant to me. Here's some more. Thanks. You know, if we find all the pieces, you can paste it together and it won't be so bad. Yeah, it'll be just as good as new. Alice! Well, I... 
I guess, I guess, I guess I got them all. I, I'm sorry. Pardon me. Yeah. How do you do? Who is that young man? I don't know, Andy. But I think he's going to sue me for $50,000. Stop joking and tell me. What was he doing in here? Believe it or not, he was looking for a button. Do you think there'll be intervention, Conte? My dear Norton, do you expect an ambassador to know anything about his own country? <laughs> What do you think, Senator? Well, since if there weren't so many mines down there, operated by American capital, I'd be more open-minded. I agree with Senator Wiley. Uh, it's high time that these uh, Marines stop acting as private police for these American dollar grabbers in South America. By me. In case any of you gentlemen are interested in domestic problems, the park is open. Gentlemen, fight it out. Right out of your own embassy, Ambassador. Mm -hmm. Why did you agree with him about intervention? You've got to handle Wiley with kid gloves. But don't worry, he'll trail along. <laughs> Mr. Kelleher is waiting to see you, sir. Who? Mr. Kelleher. Oh, excuse me. Deal me out, gentlemen. <laughs> then there's that new congressman. He'll be here in the morning. I hope he's a better specimen than the last one that you sent down here. I was afraid to invite him home to dinner for fear that he'd steal the candlesticks. You seem to forget, Kelleher, that you're no longer in the Sixth Ward. We need a different type of man in Washington. Oh, say, this man Brown is just what you ordered. Can he wear a dress suit so that he doesn't look as if he were a... Dance hall bouncer? Well, he ought to. He was born in one. <laughs> you ought to see him. He's all front and no back. Wears star-spangled underwear. His family dates back to the Revolution. Why, his blood is bluer than, uh, than one of Sophie Tucker's songs. Hmm. What's his political record? This is the first time he's ever held office since he was cheerleader in college. Speaks a bunch of languages and don't know what it's all about. Yes, well, you'll start his education with the digger bill. Leave it to me, leave I, it I, to... Good night, Kelleher. Good night, Mr. Norton. Carl, don't you know that you shouldn't enter my house without a search warrant? Even though you are the head of the prohibition department? Was. Was? I'm going to resign. Sit down, Carl. Come on now. What's all this nonsense, hmm? I'm through. I can't go on with it. Well, that's very disturbing. It was very difficult for me to get to this appointment. Oh, yes, it was, Norton. All you had to do was Pick up that telephone. Well, pick it up now and, and get somebody to take my place. I seem to recall that you were very grateful at the time. I've learned a lot since then. Exactly. And that's why we can't afford to let you go. Candidly, why should we? You have one of the best jobs in Washington. Plenty of money. Nothing to do. I've made up my mind to quit. Precisely what do you intend to do? Where do you intend to go? I don't know. Well, I'll tell you. You'll go directly from Washington to Leavenworth. You'll spend the rest of your life in a federal prison. I'd go to prison cheerfully if I thought I could take you with me. Exactly, my dear fellow, but you can't. Yes, you know that, don't you? Yeah. That's the answer, all right. They can get me, but they can't touch you. Exactly. So suppose we don't say any more about it. Would you care for a little drink? No, thanks. May I use some of your paper to write a note? Your resignation? No. Certainly. Thanks.
Hello, Spencer. Yes, sir. Senator Wiley's granddaughter is en route to Washington on the Congressional Limited. I want to send her some flowers. Yes, sir. She's getting off at Baltimore. See that the flowers reach her before then. Three fish hooks, you worms. <laughs> Losers push. Shall I tell Mr. Norton you're going, Mr. Tilden? No, don't disturb him. Well, I bought it a stamp. I left three cents in the door. Yes, sir. Good night, Spencer. Good night, sir. with that good old smile. This way, please, Senator. Now, one uh, profile, if you will, Senator. Where are you going? Uh, I'm going to tell them camera folks you's here. No, you don't. Well, don't you want your picture, too? You stay right here. Oh, I think that's a bad move you make, Mr. Button, not to get your picture, too. Mr. Willis. Uh, no doubt you've heard of me from Mr. Kelleher. I can't say that I have. Uh, I am to be your secretary. My what? Uh, your secretary. I uh, took the liberty of uh, bringing your mail over from the house office. <laughs> yes, and I have a little something here that Mr. Keller has said for you to bring to the hotel. Some genuine embassy stuff. Exceedingly hard to get. Oh, yes. Uh, <clears throat> Here is a telegram that came to you. I took the liberty of opening it. The constituents will expect you to vote favorably on H.R. 417. Stop. Willis will explain. Kelleher. You understand, sir. The only thing I understand about that is a signature. What is uh, H.R. 417? Well, I, I think that that is the reclamation bill. No, 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 no. That, that must be the bill appropriating two million for the restoration of Fort Digger as a, a monument to, to house the relics of General Digger's expedition. Mm -hmm. Now, who was General Digger? Well, that I can't tell you. Uh, but I do know that Mr. Kelleher was very emphatic about your support of this bill. Now, uh, I'll let you know when the vote comes up. Well, that's very, very nice. Now, I suppose this fort commemorates something? Yes, I believe the fort was originally erected to mark the spot on which General Digger made his last stand. But you don't know where he stood? Uh, no, sir. Well, I'll tell you where I stand. I can't use you as a secretary. Well, but I don't understand. I have served the last three congressmen that Mr. Kelleher sent here from your district. I suppose so. You're all right. I've got nothing against you. You've got a nice face. I'm sure you're good to your mother. I've got absolutely nothing against you. Then why do you object to my being your secretary? Because Kelleher sent you. What? Come on, Clarence. Yeah, but... Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> hey, Mr. Wood, are we going to see the president? Clarence, take those bags and up the hotel. I'll join you later. Alice Hotel. Oh, 
For your old flat-footed MP. <laughs> well, you ought to know. Last time I saw you was in a hooska in Paris. The old cockroach. You haven't changed a bit. What are you doing here? Trying to collect an IOU from the government. Come on, get in the train with the rest of us. Let go, you mug. I got business to attend to. What do you mean, business? Come on, Brownie. Uh, 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 uh. Congressman Brown to you. What? You heard me, Congressman. Don't you read the papers? Well, I'll be... Say, what's this country coming to anyway? When they put a mug like you into Congress. Well, gee, you couldn't peel potatoes when you was in my outfit. Maybe that's why they elected me congressman. I just got in pound beef and I'm dying to celebrate. Could you go for a little drink? Could you? Real embassy stuff. Come on, Brownie. There you are. Our own little G.A.R. Bonusville, D.C. So this is Washington, huh? Part of it, pal. Part of it. Come on. I'll show you around the camp. Baby's here? Yeah, too bad. Her old man kicked off a couple of days ago. All right, Corporal, your watch is relieved. Entre vous, monsieur. Diable espagnol? Oh, plenty. <laughs> I'll have to fire that butler of mine. Look at the way he left the joint. How long have you been here, B? Oh, only a couple of weeks. Some of the fellas have been here for months. What have you been doing with yourself since you got out of the army? Oh, looking for a job. So you put it over on him, eh? Yep. Local boy makes good. Congressman. <laughs> <laughs> A terrible thing, Mr. Tilden's suicide last night. Hmm. Is it true, Senator, that he killed himself because of domestic troubles? So I've heard, Martin. Well, who's going to take Tilden's place in the department? Martin, I think your suggestion would be a good one. Williams, he seems to be all right. And the committee seems favorable. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Mr. Williams has had a lot of experience. Uh, if anybody asks for me, Martin, I'll be on the floor. Yes, sir. Capital, 3-2. Never mind. Martin speaking, Mr. Norton. Williams is okay here. Yes, sir. Thank you. Not for me. I've had enough already. Yeah, we got some pretty good friends here at that. There's a fellow by the name of uh, Norton, a big shot over in Washington. He says there's a truckload of food every day. <laughs> He's all for the bonus. And we can only get a few more guys like you into Congress. That reminds me, I got a lot of work to do. I've got to be going. Well, what's your hurry? Oh, I've got to see a fellow by the name of Tilden. Office probably closes by now. Oh, 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 I've got to be going. You can't go without meeting some of the boys. Mm -mm, not today. Some other day, but not today. Come on, come on. It'll only take a minute. Oh, all right. Everybody! Everybody! Come on, get going there! Come on, get them around here! Come on! Quiet, men, quiet. Now, men, you know how hard you've been trying to get into Congress during the past week to see some of them Solons, and you couldn't even get past the front steps. Well, it remained for you, Mr. Brannigan, to bring Congress to you. I take great pleasure in introducing you to Congressman B.G. Brown. And he's a regular guy. He was in my outfit in Fellow Woods. He's one of our own boys. And with a friend like that in the House of Representatives, I'm laying eight to five that we'll be out of the trenches by Christmas and riding home in Pullmans on government dough. And I don't mean freight cars. All right. 
What do you want to hear, fellas? The holy or the truth? Come on, no, shoot the word. Shoot That's the word. Give us a lowdown, buddy. All right, I can't tell you anything about the bonus because I don't know anything about it myself. But I know it wasn't that 30 a month that sent you to France. Some of you enlisted. Some of you were drafted. I don't think any of us knew what it was all about. We were told we were fighting for our country. Maybe we were kidding. Maybe our country should have stayed out of that war. Perhaps the United States wasn't in any real danger then, but men, it is in danger now. And the enemy aren't in Europe. They're right here in Washington. They've got this government by the throat and they're choking them with bribery and crookedness. I know what I'm talking about because that's how I got to Washington. I'm telling you the truth. I want you to tell me the truth. How many of you voted at the last election? Raise your hand. Uh-huh, about half of you. Now keep them up. Those of you who voted, how many of you sold your votes? Step forward. Come on, don't be afraid. This isn't a congressional investigation. All right, you don't have to tell me. I'll tell you. I was elected by bought votes. Some of those votes were bought from men like you, ex-servicemen. I couldn't have gotten to Washington if it wasn't for a crooked political machine in my state. The good people of my district didn't vote for me. Most of them didn't vote at all. Neither did you. You were too busy worrying about your bonus. The Constitution of these United States provided for a government by petition and not by intimidation. That's what this all amounts to. I'll tell you this, brother. You'll never get the soldiers vote when you come up for re-election. I'll say you won't. And you won't get the women's votes either. Well, let me tell you this, brother. I don't want the soldier vote, and I don't want the women's vote. I don't want any vote. My only constituents are the crooks who put me in office, and I'm going to use that office to double-cross them like they've been double-crossing the people. The people, huh? I talked to a lot of them on the train coming in, all kinds, all sorts, men and women, all coming to Washington to get something. Why doesn't somebody come to Washington to give something? Let me tell you this. This nation is in trouble. Great trouble, plagued with a thousand problems. This isn't just a depression, this is a crisis. You've got a Senate and a House of Representatives filled mostly with honest, patriotic men. Yes, they are, Americans to the core. You've got thousands of others working for you, from the chief executive on down to the White House doorman. And they're all striving to bring this nation back to its place in the sun. But they're handicapped hamstrung by a hidden government, an evil marauding crew that has turned the Constitution of the United States into a bill of sale. Your government needs your support, your understanding, your help to throw out the vermin. And what do you do? You all march out here like a bunch of panhandlers begging for a handout, like so many blind men rattling tin cups. All Wait a minute, wait a minute! He's had a couple of drinks, he don't know what he's talking about! Yes, I do, it's the truth! That's why you don't like it! Why don't you help your government instead of hindering it? Go on back home! Tell the voters in your town, men and women, what it's all about! Drive them to the polls, wake them up! You call yourselves ex-servicemen! Well, why don't you become servicemen? <laughs> I have a reservation here, uh, B.G. Brown. Oh, yes, Mr. Brown, yes. Your men arrived this afternoon. Uh, just a second, Mr. Brown. Uh, Mr. Bouchard. Uh, uh, Congressman Brown. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yes, indeed, Mr. Brown. Uh, uh, will you step into my office for a moment? Uh, if you please. I, I trust you had a pleasant journey. Oh, yes. I myself was down to meet the Limited this morning and naturally was disappointed in your not being on that train. Permit me. Mr. Brown, we are honored in having you here. We've put you in suite 14A in our residential section, pending your approval, of course. We, uh, we also have taken the liberty of having a few cards engraved for your immediate use. This is just a detail of our service. Well, thanks. Thanks very much. I was, I was elected on a platform of service myself. Now, if I can be of any help to you. Well, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I never ask for favors. 
But it does happen that I have a nephew who wants very much to be a page boy in Congress. Well? Well, sir, if you... Uh... Do I appoint page boys? Why, of course, sir. Yes, well, um, I'll, uh, I'll see what I can do. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Now, if you'll permit me, uh, I'll show you to your elevator. Now, if there's anything that I can do for you, sir, anything of a special interest to you that, uh... We have the very finest embassy stuff. And, of course, you know there's nothing better in all the world. Do you want to do something for me? Something very important? Well, certainly, sir. Certainly. I'll make your nephew a page. I'll make him a chapter. I'll make him a whole book. You see that girl dancing in there? Yes. Tell me who she is. That is Miss Alice Wiley, granddaughter of Senator Wiley, of your state. Yes? Here. an old friend of mine, Mr. Um, the Strictly Honorable Button Gwinnett Brown. Brown? Name sounds vaguely familiar. <laughs> well, well, Brown is a common name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have some ghastly news for you. After I left you last night, I discovered I didn't have all the pieces. Oh, really? Yes, the most important piece of all is gone, the signature. I, I didn't want to disturb you after you reti retired. I thought I'd see you at breakfast. I was so worried I didn't sleep a wink all night. When I did get up, I called at your drawing room and you'd gone. Well, I got off at Baltimore. I had luncheon date. Oh, I searched all over your room for the missing piece and I couldn't find it. Of course not. I had it. Oh, you, you found it this morning? No, last night when we were both looking. Well, well you, you mean you... I you... held out on you. Yeah, that's characteristic of Miss Wiley. Oh, pay no attention to that, Mr. Brown. <laughs> I have every intention of making good. Oh, you, ha you have it with you now? Oh, dear, no. I don't carry relics around to dinner dances. <laughs> I suppose you do think that I'm making a tremendous fuss about nothing. Let me have your pencil, will you? Turn around a minute, Ed. Certainly. Now, take care of that. Someday that signature may be valuable. <laughs> <laughs> A very charming young woman, Miss Wiley. <clears throat> oh, good evening, Governor. Good evening. He knows more about Washington than her grandfather. And Mr. Norton is one of our most important young men. Exceedingly influential. Ah, good evening, Mrs. Henry. Good evening. <clears throat> you know, I like to think our hotel is like the Rue de la Paix in Paris. If you stay in one spot long enough, you meet everybody that is anybody. <clears throat> Now, about that embassy stuff. Well, uh, I'll get in touch with you later. Thank you. Uh, yes, sir. Real genuine embassy stuff. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I, I'll tell Mr. Brown. Yes, sir. Excuse me, Mr. Brown is just locked on the inside. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, this is the residence of Congressman B.G. Brown. Yes, sir. Oh, Mr. Keller will be right up. Uh, Mr. Keller will be right up, sir. Mm, Keller. Uh, Mr. Button, now, it was all right for you to fire that secretary this afternoon, but you got to get yourself another one right away. You, you're going to need it. This telephone's been ringing all the afternoon. Anything important? Oh, yes, sir. Just as soon as I came in, the phone rang, and... Oh, yes, it, it, it was a newspaper fellow. Now, he wants to know if you are a descendant of the original Button Gwinnett. If so, he wants to review you. Interview? Oh, yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Uh, oh, and the, the latest club called up. The latest of the, uh, of the resolution. They want to know if you can come over Thursday night and orate on your ancestors. Yeah, did uh, Carl Tilden call? No, sir. Well, well, here you are. <laughs> Glad to see you. I've been trying to get you all the afternoon. Want to be the first one to welcome you. 
The party put up a great fight. But it was close. But we got you in. And now all you've got to do is to live up to the standards of the great party we represent. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. I, uh, I met Willis down in the lobby. He seemed put out about something. I put him out. Shouldn't have done that. He's an old timer, knows all the ropes. That's why I hired him. And that's why I fired him. That don't make sense. I didn't want Willis because you sent him to me. And that still don't make sense. Sit down, John. I'll try to explain. First of all, I want to thank you for all you've done for me. I never could have gotten to Congress without you. I couldn't have been elected dog catcher without you. I'm glad you know that. I know a lot of other things. I know that our state is just one great big contented cow that you've been milking for years. You get all the cream, the people get all the clabber. That's right. 50-50. I never liked you, Kelleher. You know why? They call you Honest John. That tipped me off from the start. Then why did you line up with me? Because I needed you. You got our state in your pocket. From the nickels of the streetcars to the millions of the power trust, you get your cut. The only thing that hurts you is that you have to split with somebody here in Washington. Tell me who it is, John. And I'll vote for that, uh, what do you call it? That digger bill. Why, you little yellow upstart. Who do you think you are that you talk to me like this? How long do you think you're going to last here? Long enough to kick you out. That's why I came to Washington. Oh. That's all, Kelleher. That's all, eh? That's all. Hmm. Is it? <laughs> My goodness. That show was a declaration of independence. Confidentially, Clarence, I'm scared to death. Sooner? All the same, they all want something. Hmm, note from old Tilden. Bad news? Have you got a Washington newspaper? Yes. What's the matter, Mr. Button? A letter from a dead man. <laughs> no. Digging for Digger. What Digger? And I thought you knew your Washington. Don't tell me you aren't all hopped up over H.R. 417. Never heard of it. A bill to provide a suitable memorial to honor and perpetuate the memory of General Phineas P. Digger. Phineas P. Digger? And who was he? That's what I've been trying to find out all afternoon. I've spent the whole time looking through these books and papers, and here's the sum total of my findings. 
digger, Phineas P., semi-legendary figure, said to have participated in two or three minor campaigns concerned with driving Indians from their own land. And H.R. 417 wants to appropriate $2 million of the people's money for that. Let's go. Did you get me down here at the Congressional Library just to tell me that? Well, it's my first real contact with legislation. Legislation? Well, there are hundreds of little pork barrel bills like that passed every session. Your secretary will tell you when to vote on them, but don't read them. Where are we going? Places. I want to show you things. There. Isn't that interesting? I've often intended to come down and see them, but I never had the time. Allow me to call your particular attention to one of the 56 signers of the Declaration of Independence. Button Gwinnett. That's why that letter you tore up meant so much to me. Yet, in a way, I'm glad you tore it up, because if you hadn't, I never would have met you. Oh, yes, you would. I'm an institution here. You couldn't have escaped me. Yes, I could. My plans didn't include you or any other woman. You see, I have a lot of work to do. You were born here. You'll probably spend the rest of your life in Washington. I'm only here for two years. Why don't you expect to be reelected? I don't want to be reelected. That's the trouble with most of the people in Washington. They want to be reelected. What for? There were 56 men who didn't worry about re-election. Every one of them, when they put, including Button Gwinnett, if you please, when they put their names on that paper, they might have been signing their own death warrant. If their cause lost, they lost everything. Life, property, honor. But they didn't lose, they won. They gave us this nation. And what have we done with it? I'm telling you, the ghosts of those 56 signers would turn in their graves if they could see how the crooks, the gangsters, the hypocrites have paralyzed our government. They've made a scrap of paper out of the Declaration of Independence. They've made a joke of the Constitution of the United States of America. And that is why I'm going to vote against the Digger Bill. That must be my telephone. Hello? This is Brown talking. This is a building superintendent, Congressman. I'm sorry about those towels, Congressman, but we decided to take out the cloth towels and put in paper towels because, well, you see, uh, some of the congressmen didn't get re-elected. They like to take home the cloth towels for souvenirs. Well, if that's the case, I won't use any towels. Now, Alice. The reason I'm against that digger, Bill, I know oh, uh, that it... Excuse me. Uh, does this uh, meet with your approval? Sure, sure, sure. Hang it up. Right. I know that it doesn't concern my district, but it is I crooked. Those, uh, and so is... Huh? Here are those wheat rot bulletins you ordered. How many of them did you bring? A hundred. A hundred? I've had over 500 requests already. Bring me another thousand. What do you think my state is? A truck farm? Well, you know, as far as I... What's that? Well, that means they're having roll call in the house. On what? I should be there, shouldn't I? Oh, no, you haven't time for that. You're too busy with that figure, Bill. Hello? This is Congressman Bound speaking. I've been looking over my list, and I see you're not lined up for any committee yet. What do you want? Committee? Committee? How about uh, coinage weights and measures? Not much to do, of course, but... Very interesting. Coinage, weights, and measures. I'll think it over. Hmm. What's this? Men's room. Uh, good day, sir. Good day. Good day. Good day. Hello? Congressman Brown isn't in just now. I can tell you right now, what you need is a good secretary. I had one. He tried to tell me what to do, and I fired him. Well, I'm going to tell you what to do, and you're going to do it and like it. If you don't get somebody to steer you straight, you'll be up to your ears in wheat rot. You won't get anywhere. 
And don't forget this, there are 434 representatives besides yourself, and a cabinet, and a president, and 96 senators besides 100,000 other people working here in Washington for the government. So don't get the idea that everything depends on you. Two, four, six. Coinage weights and measures. Well, Congressman Small, this is Congressman Brown's secretary speaking. About that committee appointment, have you anything open in appropriations, uh, interstate commerce or foreign affairs? You haven't? Why didn't Senator Wiley speak to you about a major committee appointment? He didn't? Well, he will, in the next day or two. Thank you. An hour late. It was Bouchard's fault. Who's he? He's a man who has a nephew who wants to be a page boy. Oh. <laughs> I dressed under his personal supervision. Bouchard is very particular. Mm -hmm. You'll do. <laughs> well, now that I'll do, I don't mind telling you I am starving to death. When do we eat? I didn't invite you here to eat. I want you to meet some people. Secretary first and hostess after. Mm, speaking of secretary, just um, what is your salary? Well, the usual salary for secretary is twenty-five hundred a year. I owe you fifty thousand. That'll take me twenty years to work that off. <laughs> and after that? Well, we'll see. I suppose these are all the big shots. Big shots? I want you to know this is the real government of the United States. They're not in any offices. They don't hold any titles. Not in cabinets. But things happen because they want them to happen. That's Dorgan over there. Navy man. He's the one who sees that we get plenty of battleships and cruisers. Mm -hmm. And just what steel company does he control? Uh, high tariff, isn't he? Oh, stop talking like a letter to the editor. He's a very distinguished man. That's Ericsson. He's better known in Sweden than Greater Garbo. Tremendous interests. Mm, I think I smell sulfur. Low tariff, isn't he? <laughs> Always belittling. Whether you like it or not, those are the people you'll have to cultivate. And you're the only person I want to cultivate. Oh. oh, Grandfather, may I present Mr. Brown, Senator Wiley. How do you do, sir? I'm glad to know you. We were just talking about you, Norton and I. He tells me that you got into a little trouble down at the ex-soldiers camp the day you arrived. A little trouble? <laughs> I was practically mobbed. Oh. What for? For telling them a little truth. A little truth is a very dangerous thing. Particularly in Washington. And uh, how do you like Washington so far? Well, I'd rather tell you what I don't like about Washington. In the first place, we're expected to take orders. Oh, my dear congressman, one never takes orders. One gathers by indirection that a certain course would be preferable. <laughs> now, what else don't you like? Well, everyone I've run into so far seems to have an axe to grind. And you don't like axes? Oh, yes. In fact, I brought one with me, but not to grind. <laughs> Mr. Brown is a sort of one-man vigilante committee. See, we mustn't forget that he is a direct descendant of one of the signers of the Declaration of Independence. And he seems to take his heritage very seriously. He has come to Washington to destroy the scribes and Pharisees. Well, can I be of any assistance? Yes, sir. I'd like to meet uh, Mr. Edward T. Norton. Oh, certainly, certainly. Hey, come right along. Oh, Ed. Ed, I want you to meet Mr. Brown. Oh, yes, I've met the congressman. How do you do? Fine, thank you. Look out for him. He's a tartar. Hmm. <laughs> Mr. Norton, I have regards from a friend of yours. A chap by the name of Carl Tilden. Are you joking? Tilden's dead. I know. He was a great friend of mine. He's known me ever since I was a kid. Only friend I have here in Washington. He'd promised to show me the ropes, and he kept his word. He wrote me a letter just before he killed himself. Let me read you the last paragraph. That's how Norton trapped me. But all his power can't stop me from what I'm going to do. The only way out that is left to me. 
At least I can be grateful to him for a chance to settle my own fate, which is more of a break than he's given to others. If you should see him, give him my regards. Well, that's very interesting. May I uh, see the letter? I'm afraid not. You, you see, the contents are rather private and confidential. Let me read you another paragraph. A shipment is on its way now, the largest shipment of liquor into this country since Prohibition. It's arriving in three foreign cruisers. Norton stands to make $20 million, get control of a port and a railway system, and tap the biggest hardwood forest this side of the Atlantic. And he'll stop at nothing, even if he has to start a revolution and have the Marines sent down to protect American citizens. Hmm. Interesting? <laughs> Childish. Tilden knew, and I know, that your interests are not confined to the liquor traffic. <laughs> your point of view is extremely naive, my young friend. But then Kelleher told me that you were very inexperienced in politics. <laughs> yep. I was foolish enough to think that I could accomplish something by coming out here and exposing Kelleher. <laughs> well, you're certainly dramatizing politics, Brown. If it were as interesting as all that, I think I'd go in for it myself. You are in it, Norton. Up to your neck. Excellent. Excellent. Well, now that you've told me all about me, suppose you tell me something about yourself. Me? <laughs> I'm just an ex-service man looking for a fight. A nice, healthy little civil war. But I promise you, I won't commit suicide. War, eh? Your, uh, your speech? Well, just a few notes. I remember my first speech in Congress 30 years ago. I have a vague recollection it had something to do with Honesty being the best policy. Or uh, maybe I tried to prove that a rolling stone gathers no moss. <laughs> Something like that. The main idea, my boy, in making your first speech is not to say anything, but to say it with great conviction. <laughs> I'll do my best. Oh. <coughs> Hello. Yes, no. I thought I'd find you here. How do you do? Just a letter from tomato salad. Uh, would that be all? Yes. Hungry, eh? Good. Do you mind if I talk to you, Miss Wiley? Well, I'd rather you listen to me. But of course, you couldn't do that. You might learn something. For instance? For instance? Well, if I were a young man starting on a career in Washington, I wouldn't go around with a chip on my shoulder making enemies. Have I made enemies? Oh, I've got no influence with you, but maybe you'll believe the senator. I imagine Alice has reference to Kelleher. Norton tells me that you've got him seeing red. Norton is mistaken. Kelleher couldn't see anything but yellow. He can't hurt me. Can't he? Suppose I were to tell you that right now he's got you in a spot where you may be out of Congress before you're even started. You mean that recount bluff back home? That is not a bluff. Oh, how can they do it? Well, they get your opponent to put in a petition for a recount charging fraud. And then they dig up a couple of ballot boxes and change a few votes, and when the recount is over, you're out and your opponent is in. That's what Keller is trying to do to you right now. They'll never get away with it. What? Senator. Will you have the time to drop over and hear my speech this afternoon? My boy, I've got the ringside seat. Good. And Alice? Oh, I've made arrangements to have Alice sit with me. What makes you think she'd stay away? I have a sneaking suspicion that she's sore at me about something. She says you're the most unmanageable Mustang she's ever tried to break in. And I think she's the most marvelous girl I've ever met. How do you do? 
I think you both have a treat in store for you this afternoon. My speech should be the sensation of the session. How's this for an opening? Gentlemen of the House, it was the prayer of Abraham Lincoln at Gettysburg that under God, this government of the people, by the people and for the people shall not perish from the earth. That was 69 years ago. And what has happened to this country since then? Gentlemen. Oh, go on, eat your steak. It's getting cold. And from the rough bound shores of Maine, to the sun-kissed shores of California. This government of the people, for the people, and by the people shall not perish from this earth. <laughs> and in conclusion, gentlemen, it is my unalterable conviction that if we follow this course, the ship of state will make a happy landing with all glory and solid and triumphant. I hope my voice doesn't break. The boys in the press gallery are all set. I'll give them something to talk about. Yes, but now don't forget what I told you about sticking to generalities. I won't. The House will now proceed to the remainder of the calendar. All bills with favorable reports from committees will be considered as being passed unanimously without any vote, unless objection be raised when each title is read. H.R. Three, eight, two, one. Passed. H.R. five, two, four, six. Passed. H. But Culberson says five, not to eight, open seven. on a two no Trump bid when vulnerable Passed. unless you have five H. quick tricks. Len two, says you seven, don't need six, five. Three. You only need four and a half. Oh. Passed. H.R. four, one, seven. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker. The gentleman from... Mr. Speaker, uh, there's one bill that's not going to pass without discussion. H.R. 417 is a bill to perpetuate the memory of one General Digger. Sir, I ask you, who is General Digger? You don't know. I doubt if anybody knows outside of myself and the sponsor of the bill. Let me tell you about General Digger. He was an old scoundrel who stole a land from the Indians, and the Digger bill is a bare-faced attempt to loot the treasury to the tune of two million dollars of the people's money. Come on me, a greenhorn. I don't know what it's all about. <laughs> but I was informed by a man high in government circles, a man whose honesty and patriotism is beyond question, that this bill is of little importance. Maybe it is. Maybe two million dollars isn't important in a four billion dollar budget. But this is important, gentlemen. A lot of you are going to vote for the Digger Bill, which you haven't even read, so that others will vote for your bill, which they haven't read. These chiseling little camphor ball measures are just chips in the big poker game played with the people's money. The gentleman will confine himself to the merits of the bill. All right, let me tell you what this bill really is. One month ago tonight, Carl Tilden committed suicide. His job is open. A job in the Prohibition Department. Somebody will be appointed to that job. Who? You back my bill, I'll back your man. That's the kind of a bill it is, and that's the kind of a man you'll get. This bill is... The, bill. the gentleman is out of order. The bill's worth two million. That job is worth much more. Not to the man who gets it, but to the people who put him there. Who are these people? Down with General Digger. Down with General Digger. The gentleman's time has expired. The question is on final passing of H.R. 417. But, Mr. Speaker. Does the gentleman wish to discuss the next bill before the House? The gentleman wishes to discuss every bill before the House. The gentleman is out of order, and he will take a seat immediately. The gentleman will stand on his feet and continue to speak his mind. Down with General Digger. Down with General Digger. Order in the House. 
The sergeant at arms will escort the gentleman from the chamber. The gentleman insists on being heard. Down with General Digger. Down with General Digger. Down with General Digger. Well, I guess an ex-congressman doesn't need a secretary. Stormy scene in Congress. Boy congressman evicted after defeating Bill. Colleagues seek autograph from descendant of Button Gwinnett. You can beat anything but ridicule. Boy, congressman. Do you mind if I tell you that you made an unmitigated ass of yourself this afternoon? Not at all. Go ahead. Get it out of your system. Well, I wish I could get it out of your system. But you won't let anybody influence you. Even me. You wanted to be a martyr and succeeded in being a goat. Well, I defeated the digger, Bill, didn't I? Yes, and defeated yourself along with it. You won your point at the expense of your career. Instead of saving yourself for the big bills, the important ones, you waste all your ammunition on a measly little bill that nobody cares anything about one way or the other. Finished? No, I haven't started yet. You ought to thank Kellier for fixing up that recount. He did you a favor. It's only a pity he didn't do it yesterday and save you from making a holy show of yourself. You seem to be under the impression that I'm through. Well, I'm not. I'm out of Congress, but I'm not out of Washington. I don't care what the papers say about me. I don't care what anybody says about me. They were laughing and kidding in that gallery this afternoon. Well, you were my gallery. I was playing to you. I thought you'd understand. And now you're sore at me because I tried to be honest. Oh, if you only weren't so stubborn, I might persuade Grandfather to get you an appointment. I don't want any appointment. Well, what are you going to do? Rent a soapbox? Yes, a thousand soapboxes and get a thousand fools like myself to stand on them and tell them the truth. They'll help me. Help you do what? Drive the crooks out of Washington. That's what I came here for. And for your information, I don't mind telling you that the biggest crook in Washington is your friend Norton. Why, he could buy and sell people like you by the gross. Sure, that's his specialty, buying and selling people. What's your price? Well, how dare you talk to me like that? You think you know your Washington. Your Washington is just a Vassar daisy chain. To you, it's all a merry-go-round. Embassies, parties, teas, dances. Well, if you got in a covered wagon, you'd ask for a chauffeur. You're like all the rest of the people around here. Soft and dizzy and useless. <laughs> Well, Button Gwynedd Brown, how are you? You're waiting for Alice? Well, thanks. I've just seen her. Well, I want to have a chat with you. Well, I was beginning to think that I had the leprosy. Oh, nonsense, my boy. You're the talk of Washington tonight. Yep, the laughing talk. Oh, shucks, my boy. Don't mind that. Every newcomer comes in for a certain amount of hazing. Let me tell you something. Some of that applause was genuine. You showed them that you were a fighter. Even if I did lead with my chin. Oh, that's all right, my boy. It's a good chin. You're a master of attack. Pretty soon you'll learn strategy. Then you'll be a world beater. Why, by the time you're a seasoned veteran... I'll never be a seasoned veteran. Kelleher is seen to that. Yes, sir. He put it over. <laughs> had me counted out with stuffed ballots, just as you had predicted. It'll all be in the papers in the morning. I'm sorry to hear that. I was planning to see Norton. He has considerable influence with Kelleher, and I thought we might be able to arrange it. Well, I'm much obliged, sir, but I'd never want anything from Norton. He's the one that gives Kelleher his orders. It's a swell slant on American politics, Senator. You can not only be counted in by a crook, but you can be counted out as well. Pardon my saying so, Brown. Your use of the word crook is a bit impetuous. Not when I'm talking about Norton. That's putting it mildly. And I can prove everything that I've said, Senator. And more. For every office holder trying to do his duty, there are ten parasites clinging to him. The Senate and the House are targets for criticism that should be directed against Norton and his crew. You've been a soldier, Senator, and I know you're a patriot. Not the flag-waving, synthetic kind, but the kind that loves his country and wants to serve it. And the old place needs plenty of loving and serving right now. 
Let's expose Norton and the rest of those crooks and drive them out of Washington. I'm obliged to remind you, sir, that Norton is a friend of mine. Oh, that's the rotten part of it when a thieving scoundrel like that can buy the services and the goodwill of a man like you. Did I hear you say bye? You heard me say bye. He couldn't get away with it, of course, if you knew it. He covers it all up. He's very good at that. He lets you win money at poker. Are you insane? No, I know what I'm talking about. I've watched several of those games. I've seen you win thousands of dollars at a single sitting because Norton laid down winning hands. You figure up how much money you've won in those poker games in the last year, and you'll know how much Norton is paying you. Get out of my house, sir! You're not bonus men now, or legionnaires, or ex-servicemen. You're just American citizens. I picked you myself because I knew I could trust every one of you. And I've got to trust you, because Brownie here has come in with a load of dynamite. The last time he was here, you run him out of camp, because he called us fools for trying to get the bonus in this way. Well, now we're ready to agree that he was right. He's a battler and a regular guy. Now, before you pack and break camp and go home, you're going to listen to him again. And if he tells you what he told me, tell him, Brownie. Men, did you ever hear of that little affair known as the Boston Tea Party? I don't know. Come on, screw, Jake. What's the matter? This is private. Oh, I see. Brannigan, we'll go to the Capitol Club. Yes, sir. I think you're wrong, Ed. Something tells me we can't depend on Wiley. He's yes. been acting strangely. Well, don't you worry. Wiley will do exactly as he's told, I guarantee you that. Well, I hope you're right. <laughs> The boys are due at my house at 2 o'clock. We'd better get started. I'd like to speak to Mr. Brown, please. Yes, it's personal. How do you do, Mr. Norton? Well, hello, boy. How do you like your new job? Swell. The boys in Anacosta need plenty of work. You've certainly done your share. Well, it's not only a privilege, it's a duty. I'll call you, Senator. <laughs> well, I can't beat you, no matter how hard I try. <coughs> your deal, Senator. Gentlemen, I think I'll quit. I'm tired. Oh, no. What? I'll cash in your chips. Uh. Well? Oh, you've taken my breath away. Is that the way you always do things, without warning? Always. As a matter of strategy. I never ask anything that I'm not sure of the answer. <laughs> What's the good of asking? Matter of form. I like form. You sound as if you were offering me a job. I am. The job of queen. 
You know enough about Washington society to know that the woman who becomes my wife will rarely be the first lady of the land. Well, I am thrilled, really. But you know, you haven't said anything about uh, love, moonlight, and the perfume of roses. I'm a practical man, Alice. Oh, hello! Did you fill any flushes this afternoon? Oh, yes, my usual quota. I never lose. My very kind friends won't let me. Your arrival is most opportune, Senator. I have just asked Alice to become my wife. That's right. Look, I'm still trembling. And just as you came in, I was about to tell him that I've been engaged to you for a long time, and it's going to be very difficult to get a divorce, isn't it? The Senator will step out gracefully, I assure you. What makes you think so? I'd like to discuss this with Mr. Norton. Oh, that means you want me to step out gracefully. Your Eminence. Your Majesty. Well, Senator, what do you think of the idea of your granddaughter becoming Mrs. Norton? I'd rather see her dead. I flattered myself that I knew something of the process of government, especially here. And yet I've been in your employ for years, helping you, helping you to do your dirty work. And I never even suspected it until this afternoon when I picked up your hand and saw three aces. Wiley, I always figured you for a sap. But the fact that you never realized before that you were being paid for everything that you did for me proves to me that you're also a fool. Yes, a fool. You can't think of any names to call me that I haven't thought of myself. I've been blind, but now my eyes are open. At first I thought I'd resign. That's what Tilden wanted to do, but you wouldn't let him. He knew too much. Now I know all that he knew and more. Good. Let's come out in the open. You sponsored Tilden's appointment and you were paid for it. You know that, don't you? You've been paid for everything that you ever did for me, Senator. You know that also. You know that Tilden committed suicide. And why? Tell me. Do you want to commit political suicide? I don't care what becomes of me. I'm an old man. The parade has passed me by. But I'm willing to go down in disgrace if I can show you up for what you are. And I'm going to do it, Norton. I'm going to do it if it's the last thing I ever do. I promise you that it will be the last thing that you ever do. Hello. Mr. Norton calling. Well, Mr. Norton, I don't care to talk to him. Senator Wiley says he doesn't care to talk to you, Mr. Norton. Yes, sir. Mr. Norton says that it would be advisable for you to postpone your conference this morning until he's had a chance to talk to you. Tell Mr. Norton the next time I see him, he will be in a federal prison. Do you mean that, sir? I certainly do. Tell him. Senator Wiley says to tell you, Mr. Norton, that the next time he sees you, you will be in a federal prison. Yes, sir. You uh, mustn't forget your mineral water this morning, sir. No, thanks. I need some iron in my blood today. Here's a list of senators I want here this morning. Call them up and ask them if they can come over immediately. Or uh, tell them it's a matter of the greatest importance. Yes, sir. Here are the newspaper men I want present. Call them up right away. Yes, sir. A, a big story, Senator? My retirement from public office. A small matter in itself, but every voter in America will be interested. What are you waiting for?
shall I take you home? Well, it wouldn't seem like home now. You mind if we just drive along the river for a while? <laughs> Certainly not. Just drive along. A great American is gone. He was a brave fighter on the battlefield and in the Senate. It will be hard to replace him. Alice, I want you to believe in me. I want you to count on me for anything that you want. Because there's nothing that I can't do. Hmm. That may sound a little grandiose, but it's the truth. I believe it. I have plans, many plans. Never in the history of this country has there been a greater opportunity offered a strong man. Italy has her Mussolini, Russia her Stalin. Such a man will rise in America. A man, not a follower, but a leader. One strong enough to take the law into his own hands if necessary. A man of destiny. Why did you stop here? Here's where you get out. What's the idea? Get out before they come in and pull you out. Here's your man. What's the meaning of this? You're under arrest. By whose authority? Mine. Take him away, man. Other car. What is this? Wait a minute. Get in the car, Alice. Costa Flats. Oh, boy, where do we go from here? Where do we go from here, boys? Where do we go from here? Paddy's neck was in the wreck, and still he had no fear. He saw a dead man next to him and whispered in his ear, Oh, joy, oh, boy, where do we go from here? The world thinks Tilden committed suicide, but his letter proves it was murder. And we have the written confession of this man that he poisoned Senator Wiley at your orders. That was murder on a small scale compared to the slaughter of the Marines sent at your orders to protect your crooked interests abroad. Murder isn't your only crime. You're guilty of bribery, theft, treason. It took the government 10 years to get Al Capone. <laughs> We're not going to wait that long. They call Capone the czar of a reign of terror. <laughs> Why, he was only a hoodlum compared to you. Every move you've made for weeks has been watched by these men. They've been with you every day, every hour, in your home, your club, your office. And the evidence they've got would convict you in any court in the land. The evidence proves that you financed newspapers, purchased lobbies, controlled state political machines. You're in the same spot now that Tilden was in, and you're going to get the same break that Tilden got. All right, men. How would you like to make yourself a million dollars? You're pretty scared now, Norton, aren't you? Otherwise, you wouldn't make me such an offer. Do you know where they're taking Martin? To police headquarters, and there'll be plenty of cops with them when they come back here. It's curtains, Norton, and you know it. Not only for you, but for all the others like you, who've been having a swell post-war holiday, getting fat on the country's troubles. We're going to have law and order again, and a government that'll function without interference from your brand of leeches. I'm telling you, Norton, the people are not going to stop until they get back their United States. If you'd like to write a confession, there's some paper in there. 
And by the way, that's your gun. The one Tilden killed himself with. And it's loaded. You might want to use it. What's happening? Where is he? He's in that tent. Alone. Put your arm around me. Please. 